Hey guys, I am so excited to bring you guys today's video. Um, most of you guys have probably seen this cookbook that I've been showing all over my Instagram. Um, Josh bought me this cookbook. He got it off of Amazon around $13 or so, but it is the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook. And in this video, I will be showing you guys four recipes from this cookbook and tonight's recipe, we're starting off with clam chowder. Me personally, every time I go to Disneyland, I have to get clam chowder in the New Orleans Square in a bread bowl. It's like a must. If I don't get it there, I do get it across the way at California Adventures as well, but every time we go to Disneyland, I have to get clam chowder in a bread bowl, even when it's in the summertime when we go. So that was the first recipe that I wanted to make as soon as I looked through this book. So I'm gonna start off with that one. Um, since I can't link the recipe below, I will take a picture of the recipe and then I'll freeze it the same for everyone as I go along so that you guys can um, take a screenshot of it if you guys want to. This recipe says it serves eight people. I am going to actually be doubling most of the ingredients. We are a family of six, but we have big eaters in this house. So, so I'm gonna read off the ingredients just as they are in the book, which is the eight serving. So you'll need one third cup of cold salted butter, one third cup of all purpose flour, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, two large yellow potatoes peeled and diced, one medium white onion peeled and diced, two medium stalks of celery trimmed and diced, one cup of clam juice, one and a half cups of heavy cream, two eight ounce cans of chopped clams in juice, two te um, one teaspoon of ground thyme, a half teaspoon of salt, and one eighth teaspoon of ground white pepper. I am using canola oil instead of vegetable oil because this is what I had on hand. So you're gonna add two tablespoons to the pot. I'm just eyeballing it. Oh wait. I already messed up. Cut! 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 Crap! I'm never going to be Martha Stewart, ever. <laughs> okay, first you are going to melt your butter over a medium heat, and then once it's melted, you'll add your flour in, stirring frequently um, for about five minutes. simmering for five minutes I've been stirring it's all like thickened now so we'll turn the heat off and you'll set this aside and then you'll grab a large saucepan and you're gonna heat your oil in it it says to use vegetable oil I only had can oil on on hand so I'm just gonna use this and then tablespoons I'm just going to eyeball it And it says to heat the oil for 30 seconds. Now you're going to add your onion. Your potatoes and your celery. And you'll cook, let this cook for about 10 minutes until the onions are translucent. Okay, so that has been cooking for the 10 minutes. And now we are going to add our final ingredients. I did want to talk about the clams real quick. The recipe calls for two 8-ounce cans of chopped clams in juice. This one is the only one I could find at the store that was the chopped clams. And it's only 6.5 ounces. So 
Um, I ended up getting three of these. It was all that the store had left, and that wouldn't have been enough to double the recipe. And so I ended up getting these baby clams that are boiled. Um, this is uh 10 ounces it looks like so um we might be adding a little bit more than what the recipe calls for but that's all they had at the store so we're just gonna work with it so now we're just gonna add the rest of the ingredients for the clams you're gonna add the clams and the juice together into the pot Now you're going to add your clam juice. Going to add your heavy cream. Going to add your seasonings, ground thyme, salt, and white pepper. And lastly, you're gonna add your butter and flour mixture. And you're gonna stir it all together. Turn the heat up and bring this to a boil. Once the soup begins to boil, you're gonna turn down the heat to a simmer. And it says to let it cook for five more minutes until potatoes are soft. We like our potatoes pretty soft and not like crunchy. So I'll probably let it simmer for a little bit longer than five minutes. All right, guys, dinner is done. Here is the clam chowder. I just put it in this um, sourdough, sourdough bread bowl I bought at Fry's. Sprinkled a little bit of black pepper on top. It tastes so good, just like Disneyland. I'm kind of sad I'm not there, but during this quarantine, I guess this is how we make Disneyland happen. Okay, so we are on recipe number two from the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook. Tonight's recipe is going to be the Campfire Chili um, from the Grizzly Peak, Peak Disney California Adventure Land. So I will do a screenshot, a still of the recipe so that you guys can um, take a screenshot if you guys are interested. Um, but to get started, you are going to need one teaspoon of vegetable oil, one medium yellow onion peeled and diced, which I already have prepared right here. You will need two teaspoons of minced garlic, one pound of ground beef. In our house, we don't typically use ground beef anymore. Uh, we substitute it with ground turkey. So that's what I will be using in today's recipe. You will need three 15 ounce cans of black beans, including the juices. Then you will need two 14 and a half ounce cans of crushed tomatoes, also including the juices. You will need one tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of dried basil, two tablespoons of ground cumin, one tablespoon of curry powder, one tablespoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground black pepper, and one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. First step is to add the one tablespoon of oil into the pot. And add your chopped and peeled onion. And your two teaspoons of chopped garlic. I'm cheating and just using the pre-minced garlic I get at Costco. Give that a stir. 
you will let these ingredients cook for about three minutes until the onions are translucent. Next, you will add your one pound of ground beef or ground turkey, whatever you guys prefer. I really need to invest in one of those meat choppers that are so popular all over YouTube and Instagram. Um, definitely need to invest in one of those. But for now, this wooden spoon will do the trick. So once that is all kind of chopped up and incorporated, you are going to cook the meat until it's brown and it says about six minutes. Now I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So our three cans of black beans, including the juices. Next, you're gonna add your crushed tomatoes. two cans of those. And I put all of the spices in this little container. So I'm just gonna dump that in. Last thing I need to add is the one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. This is taking forever. <laughs> All right, give all of that a stir. And then that's it, you're gonna let this simmer. Oh, it does say turn the heat down to low. So I didn't do that. And then it says let it simmer for one hour. While the chili is cooking, I am going to get started on dessert. And for dessert, we are going to make chocolate hazelnut lunchbox tart. This recipe serves six. We are a family of six, so I'm actually going to double the recipe. You're gonna need one box of frozen puff pastry sheets, three-fourths cup of chocolate hazelnut spread, one large egg, one tablespoon of room temperature water, one cup of confectioner sugar, two tablespoons of heavy cream, and two tablespoons of cooked bacon bits. This is the black label microwave ready bacon. I really like this stuff, especially making bacon bits because you can get the bacon really extra crispy and easier to crunch up. So just a little tip, this is a good, good thing to use. Okay, some of this stuff is gonna be for later in the recipe after it's already cooked. But the first thing you're going to do is take out your pastry sheets and allow them to thaw. It takes about 40 minutes for them to thaw and preheat pre your oven to 400 degrees. First, you're going to take one sheet of the puff pastry and it says to cut it into six rectangular pieces. Oh, this would be rectangular. and place them on your baking sheet. So after that is ready, you're going to add two tablespoons of the chocolate hazelnut filling on each rectangular piece of puff pastry. And I'm not really measuring it. Um, this stuff is quite messy. So I'm not using like an actual um, measuring spoon and it says to keep it in the middle to keep the edges clean so I'm um, doing the best I can because this stuff is like gooey gooey Together. 
Now you will brush each edge of the pastry with the egg wash, just the edges. Next, we're gonna cut to our other sheet of puff pastry, um, same rectangular shape. Next, you're going to use your fingers to gently push up the middle of the puff pastry to accommodate for the chocolate hazelnut filling. I think that's pretty good. And then you're going to place it on top of the other one and gently press the edges together. and repeat the steps. Next, you're going to crimp the edges with a fork. Now you will put these in your preheated oven for 18 minutes. All right, the chili is done. We have topped ours with shredded cheese and green onion. It looks really good. And then I made some corn muffins to go along with it. So the tarts cooked, um, I did about 20 minutes instead of 18 minutes just because they weren't as golden. And they have been cooling for about an hour. That's what the instruction says is to allow the tarts to completely cool for about an hour. Now I am chopping up the bacon. I just microwaved the bacon a little bit longer than the packaging says so that it's extra crispy. So I'm just chopping that up now. It calls for two tablespoons and I used two packages of the microwavable bacon, which I think is eight slices total. So it looks like that'll be the perfect amount. We had the chili for dinner and it was really good. Um, in my homemade chili that I make, I always add a little bit of brown sugar, which might be crazy to some of you, but just trust me, don't knock it until you try it because it's really good. Um, so all of us kind of agreed that the chili that we had tonight, the Disneyland inspired one was missing that little bit of sweetness from the brown sugar. Definitely going to make it again, but I think I'm gonna add the brown sugar to that exact recipe. So far between the clam chowder and the chili though, the kids liked the clam chowder recipe better than the chili recipe. So, okay. Now that the bacon is chopped, we are going to make the topping. This is one cup of powdered sugar and we need to add two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. spread about a tablespoon of the icing 
on each pastry. I may have to make more of this since I doubled the recipe. And now we can serve them up. And that is what the inside looks like. All right, guys, we are on our final recipe for this part one series of the recipes out of the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook. And in this recipe, we are going to be making chicken drumsticks found on Pixar Pier inside Disney California Adventures. I have everything pretty much laid out here on the countertop, but I'm gonna go ahead and read the recipe list to you as well. Um, this recipe in the book serves six. We are a family of six. So I always like to make a little bit extra. Um, we do have pretty big eaters in this house, so I always make extra. So I am actually going to double this recipe, but I will read off just the main recipe that serves six. For this recipe, you will need a half cup of cold salted butter, one fourth cup of all purpose flour, a half cup of yellow cornmeal, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of ground dried sage, a half teaspoon of ground black pepper, six skin on, six four ounce skin on chicken drumsticks. So not a lot of ingredients for this recipe. A lot of this stuff I already had on hand. Uh, we always carry chicken drumsticks in the house. It's like a staple that we have usually once a week. Um, so, I already have all of my seasonings measured out and into these two bowls, again, because I am doubling it. First, you're going to get a nine by 13 baking pan. So these are the pans that I have. Um, they're from Rachel Ray. I really like them. And then it says to place your butter in the pan. Then you are going to put the pan in your oven and preheat it to 450 degrees. You will also need a large resealable plastic bag. And in your bag, you are going to add all of your dried ingredients. they look like now you are going one at a time place your chicken in your seasoning bag shake it up place the chicken on your prepared baking sheets so I guess this is kind of like a shake and bake chicken um if you guys ever had shake and bake chicken before this kind of seems like that I'm going to do mine skin side down for now because after it cooks for the first 20 minutes, you're going to flip it and cook another 20 minutes. And then I want the skin side up so it can get nice and crispy. How I like it. So once you do that, it says 
Carefully pat leftover seasoning from bags onto drumsticks. So we'll go ahead and do that. into the oven for 20 minutes. The chicken is done. It looks so good and crispy and smells delicious. I also made this Jiffy cornbread casserole. First time making it, I tried a little piece right there. It's so yummy. And then I also made southern fried apples, which are also so good. All right, guys, I'm going to get dinner served up. We are all pretty hungry over here. Um, that'll be it for this part one series of the Disney cookbook recipes. Please let me know if you guys make any of these dishes. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really excited to see what you guys think about them. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys really soon. Bye.